Hi, my name is Mitch. I'm with Mitchell Wu Toy Photography. I'm a professional toy photographer based in Los Angeles, California. I've been photographing toys since 2015, and I've had the chance to work with movie studios, entertainment companies, and of course, a lot of the toy companies you're familiar with. So Schleich challenged me to bring children's imaginations to life through my toy photography. And now we're challenging you to do the same thing. Head on over to the Power of Imagination website to see some of the images I created for this campaign. Learn how to submit your photos to this contest and grab some of your favorite Schleich figurines and play sets. Grab a cell phone or a camera and get to work. And guys, bring your imaginations because Schleich has some incredible prizes. So are you ready to do this? Excited to do this? Let's have some fun. I photograph toys all the time. So really, what do you need for toy photography? Well, you need a camera because there's photography involved, of course. You need toys, but the third so important ingredient, you need your imagination. Okay, so you don't have a yard. Take it inside your apartment or your house. The point is, use your imagination and find a location to shoot. You know that Schleich puts out so many cool toys. And when you have so many to choose from, I just really want you to think about choosing toys that you just really love to play with because if you choose toys that you love, that love is gonna come through in the images that you create. So just make sure you focus in on toys that you love. And hey, if you love a red dragon with a horse or an elephant, go ahead and mix them up. Everything is possible with toy photography. You're just gonna use your imagination and go for it. So I'm in my front yard, I'm looking around and I see this patch of dirt right here. It's in front of some shrubs, which I think would make a nice background. So I'm going to take a couple of toys and I happen to have a horse and I have a cow. And maybe the story is these two animals are meeting for the first time. So right now we have the beginning of a story and a scene. And just to add a little interest and depth to it, I'm gonna add some trees. Will they be real trees? No. So what I did was I got some sticks that are going to act as my trees. It's simple, use your imagination, go find some branches or some rocks and create your scene. Okay guys, I'm here on my porch where I photograph a lot of my images. And again, just to tell you, you do not need a lot for toy photography. Today I'm using a blue poster board to imitate a blue sky. If I didn't want that, I'd just use the green shrubs in the background. Um, but let me show you real quick how I set this up. I put a piece of cardboard here just to kind of protect the paint on the railing because I do a lot here. And this is so important for me. It's a green piece of foam. So I got this at the local hobby shop and um, you'll see in a bit why I use it. Because it's on such a slim railing, I do put a couple of heavy rocks on each side just to help stabilize it. And, uh, and then what I do a lot of is I add some dirt. And this is dirt that I just dug up in my yard. And maybe you want a little more hills in certain areas, so I'll clump up a little just for interest. I have a bucket of trees. Okay, so what we're missing, of course, are the toys. All right, so there we are. We have this, and I don't know if these are friends meeting up. Perhaps they're foes, which means enemies. Um, but this is the beginning of a nice scene. So um, let me tell you a little about shooting toys. So if this was my scene, what I would do is I'd want to get down to toy level to photograph these toys. When you do that, you allow your viewer to become part of the world that you created for these toys. And when that happens, they can experience the story as you meant it to be told. So I set up my camera on a tripod at this level, bringing the viewer right into the scene. Let me say a few words about gear and cameras. The gear you use is less important than the stories you tell. So whether it's a cell phone, or maybe you have an old point and shoot. I use my larger camera, but again, any one of these will do. Tell the story. Storytelling is the most important part of this. So one of the things I love about toy photography is the problem solving that you get to do from start to finish of a toy photo. So if you're using a cell phone or actually any kind of camera and you need a stable base to put it on, Good old trusty sandbag that I made myself using a baggie and sand. But here's how it would work. If you have your cell phone, for example, you just put your sandbag down like this. Get your cell phone, find the position for your shot, stick it in, 
and you're ready to go. So get creative, think about how you want or what you need to do, and then find a way to do it. That's toy photography. The way that I have my camera positioned right now, you can see the entire setting, all the way to the tip of the T-Rex's tail, the trees, the sky, the cow, and the viewer wouldn't know exactly what I'm trying to tell them. But look what happens when you pull in closer. Immediately, we begin to see a more natural interaction and focal point with the T-Rex and the cow. So when you take your photo and when you set up your shot, think about what the focal point and the story is. Lighting is so important to all types of photography and toy photography is no exception. You really want to show your toys in the most flattering light. Try to avoid shooting in the bright sunshine, especially like around noon when shadows are just falling straight down. Those shadows can be very distracting on the toys. Find some nice soft diffused light, whether it's in the shade, on a porch, or under some trees, or next to a wall that's gonna show off your toys in the most flattering way. A lot of my images were just created in the shade, but let's say you do want to have addis some additional light to help them pop. Let's just get creative, you know, flashlights are very useful for all types of toy photography. You can see how it makes them just stand out and pop. Or you could just use your cell phone flashlight. So my point is, Find the light that is going to make your toys look the best and not be a distracting factor to your stories. Who wants to play hide and seek? Me! All right, now you can see that I have the dirt onto my base here. This is where I'm going to build my scene out. And uh, maybe we'll just start with this branch. Okay, so basically a lot of times to get the dirt to kick up in the air, I either use a can of compressed air like this, or I actually just throw the dirt into the scene. Um, today, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use this compressed air just to give you an idea of what that looks like. It's really simple. Just like that. All right, so this is my final, final setup. This is what I ended up shooting. And if you remember my initial setup, you'll remember I had the big tree stump here. But when I looked at it through the camera, I realized that that big branch was way too distracting for this scene. So what I did was I built up the scene here. I added some rocks, I raised the ferns up, um, and that made it look more like they were hiding behind something. I'm not sure that was clear with that big tree. So stay flexible when you set it up. If it's not working, go ahead and shift things around, change the composition. The environment and the composition has to work really well and has to support your story. If it's not doing that, then change it up. Also, you'll see that I had this guy on wires. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to drill and insert wires. What you wanna do is tell your story, right? So how are you gonna do that without that? Well, one other idea is to have on the ground. I love this as well because he's lower, it's harder to see them. That's a really good hiding spot then. Or if I really wanted to put him up in the sky, then I would put a rock or a branch, set him on it, and that is really effective as well. So again, my point is be flexible, move things around as you need to, think of your overall environment, and tell your story. So I want you guys to have a lot of fun with this. Grab your favorite Schleich toys, use those imaginations, and I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Head on over to the Schleich Power of Imagination website to learn all of the details. Thank you.